you know, Democrats think that as they follow Republicans to the right, they're just, you know, picking up new right wing voters and absorbing, you know, that that demographic while also holding their base. But that's not the way that it works as they shift to the right. They pick up new ground, but also lose a lot of ground with the left. You know, it's not like one side of um, that spectrum between left and right shifts. Like, it's a block that shifts entirely. And as you shift to the right, you lose the left. And increasingly, as the Republican Party shifts further and further to the right and become a far-right extremist party, you know, akin to UKIP or other really fringe right-wing parties in Europe that we see, the Democratic Party is trying to pick up those moderates that Republicans are losing. And it's why you're seeing politicians in Congress that are basically Republican and Democrat, but indistinguishable from one another, ideologically speaking. Like, Joe Manchin and Susan Collins are very much aligned. You can almost not see any, uh, I think, noticeable ideological differences. They're in lockstep on everything when it comes to economic issues, to uh, most social justice issues. So, you know, the problem is that the Democratic Party should never be hospitable to right-wing moderates. But with Donald Trump's takeover of the Republican Party increasingly, we've heard from the so-called never-Trump crowd of more moderate Republicans who aren't necessarily um, in lockstep with the uh, overt nationalism and xenophobia that we see coming from the Republican Party. So they've kind of found a new home in the Democratic Party. So we see people like Anna Navarro go on CNN and represent this never-Trump part of the Republican Party. And we see Jennifer Rubin, uh, who is one of the worst people in the country, I think, increasingly admit, you know, I'm no longer really vested uh, invested in the Republican Party. I kind of found a home in the Democratic Party. And she penned an article in the Washington Post explaining how she actually does feel at home with the Democratic Party. Now, this tells you a lot about the Democratic Party. They should never, ever be so right-wing that a moderate Republican can feel right at home in the Democratic Party. That tells you they've shifted so far to the right that they're not going to be able to hold the base. You can no longer just expect that left-wing people are going to vote for you if you can appeal to people like Jennifer Rubin. And I want to get to her article here uh, because, believe it or not, she does lend us a lot of insight as to why the Democratic Party appeals to someone like her who's just a flat-out right-winger. So her op-ed is titled, Never Trump Becomes Never Republican, and she kind of explains why she now aligns more with the Democratic Party as opposed to the Republican Party. She writes, There once was a friendly debate among those who used the Never Trump moniker about whether the GOP could be saved or was worth saving. Early in the Trump presidency, if not before, I answered no. Many who once spoke of reforming or reviving the party now have come around to the view it is hopeless. I cannot speak for others, but the reason the Republican Party is not worth saving is that with few exceptions, e.g. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker, its members have fully embraced Trump and Trumpism, a noxious brew of nationalism, contempt for truth, xenophobia, and an America-first agenda. Any of these would have sent me fleeing from the party. Collectively, they make it impossible to return. Sadly, my feelings toward the spineless Republicans who blindly supported Trump, opposed impeachment, enabled his lies and attacks on institutions, and have not found the nerve, even in a pandemic, to take issue with his lies, impulsive reactions, and dangerous preferences can be summed up in a single word, contempt. Democrats, to the relief of many never-Trumpers, made it easy for us in this presidential election. Former Vice President Joe Biden is a decent, qualified man who is respectful of objective reality, all right, understands separation of powers, and embraces America as a nation founded on a creed. All men are created equal, not on blood and soil. He is no socialist. We can happily embrace him. I would have been prepared to crawl over broken glass to vote for anyone but Trump, yes, even Senator Bernie Sanders, because of my conviction that Trump is a menace to democracy and now a danger to our very lives. It would not have been a pleasant choice, and many never-Trumpers would not have joined me. Thankfully, we were spared the Sanders versus Trump matchup. 
Finally, many people ask, are you all big D Democrats now? My answer is, it depends. I am a Pat Moynihan Democrat, a Scoop Jackson Democrat, an Andrew Cuomo Democrat. I am not a Bernie Sanders Democrat. So where does that leave me? Where I have been for just about four years, a center-right member of the resistance, an advocate for good governance and internationalism, including free trade and robust legal immigration, and a passionate believer in the American creed. The best answer, perhaps, to the partisan affiliation question is that it is a time for creative policy and civility, so we will focus on that. One final point, never Trumpers, now never Republicans, should keep their eye on the extraordinary class of female freshman house centrists, Representatives Abigail Spanberger, Mikey Sherrill, Elaine Luria, and others. A lot of those ex-Republicans might decide they are Abigail Spanberger Democrats. So a lot of people instinctively might see this article and think, wow, this is really smart of Democrats. You know, Trump is abandoning the base and Democrats are just appealing to all of those people left behind by Donald Trump. Except let's keep things in perspective. The never Trump portion of the Republican Party is a very, very small fraction. And they're boosted and, you know, given this impression that this is a larger phenomenon that it is because we always hear from them in mainstream media. I mean, how often have we heard from Anna Navarro lately? How much articles from the Washington Post from Jennifer Rubin have we seen lately? So, you know, there's this illusion that the never Trump phenomenon is widespread and Donald Trump is just out of step with the Republican Party base. But that's factually incorrect. If you look at approval ratings from within the Republican Party, Trump is comfortably above 90 percent. And, you know, sometimes he dips into the 80s. But for the most part, the aggregate Republican Party absolutely loves Donald Trump. And so here's the main point. The fact that any former Republican can just feel right at home with Democrats while not making any ideological shifts whatsoever, while not changing their philosophy on politics, that is a huge, huge problem. Because it tells you there's a gigantic portion of the electorate that Democrats are abandoning for this small fraction of Republicans. Think about this. We all who watch this channel or, you know, are in tune with progressive politics feel disenfranchised and disenchanted with the Democratic Party. But have you ever thought, you know what, since I don't really agree with Democrats, I'm going to become a Republican? Well, of course not. That doesn't make sense, right? Because ideologically, the Republican Party is at the opposite end of the spectrum that we're all on. But with uh, Jennifer Rubin, she didn't have to change anything about her neoliberal worldview, her free market worldview. And Democrats, you know, she feels right at home with them. That tells you that the Democratic Party has shifted. They shifted to the right. Now, you'll hear people on Fox News like Tucker Carlson scream about crazy socialists and the far left. And sure, we have more left-wing representatives in Congress now, like AOC and Pramila Jayapal. But... They're just one block, a very small block, who doesn't have that much power within the Democratic Party. The fact still remains, even if we've made some attempts to yank the Overton window back to the left, that Democrats disproportionately are a right-wing party. They used to be centrist to center-right, and now I think you can accurately characterize them as a right-wing party. Because think about this. If you look through, you know, right-wing parties throughout Europe, just take the Tories, for example, in the UK, they are arguably to the left of Democrats on some issues. And this is the conservative party in the UK, because think about this, Boris Johnson, even if you don't necessarily believe him, he believes in a national health system. Now, he's probably just paying lip service to that. He's trying to undermine it at every step of the way and, you know, privatize more portions of it, but he at least has to hide his agenda. Whereas Democrats were openly hostile towards the no notion of Medicare for All, which doesn't even go as far as the UK's national health system. We're talking about, you know, uh, government-run insurance, not health care. And yet Democrats are using the same exact talking points that Republicans use. How are you going to pay for it? 180 million Americans will be kicked off their private plans that they love so much. And it's not just the UK. Look at the Conservative Party in Canada. Again, same thing. They are to the uh, left of Democrats. 
So this article right here, even if we all can't stand Jennifer Rubin and she's an insufferable hack, the fact that she feels right at home in the Democratic Party shows you how far they've fallen. Because rather than firmly planting their feet in the ground and saying, no, we're not going to follow Republicans to the right, we realize that there are real issues and policy prescriptions that are progressive that will you know meet the needs of Americans. So we're not going to follow you to the right and opt for more neoliberalism and private you know solutions to public problems. No, we're not going to do that. But they're not doing that. They're not doing that. And as they shift further and further to the right, Democrats are even abandoning the one thing that made them appealing in the first place. Social justice and racial justice issues. And that's awful because once you take away that, you know, cultural issues, you know, the left wing social justice issues, then what point is there to vote for Democrats? You just have two economically conservative parties. I mean, think about this with the Tara Reid Me Too situation. They've abandoned the issue of Me Too entirely throughout the course of the primary. We saw scandals with regard to Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg and their relationship with the black community. And this wasn't really discussed. So I need you to understand, it should never, ever be the case that a Republican can feel right at home in the Democratic Party by not changing their ideology. If for whatever reason, Jennifer Rubin thought, you know what, everything that I believed before, you know, following Ayn Rand and Milton Friedman, whoever she, you know, uh, aligns with philosophically, if she has like a political awakening, then that's fine. You know, join the Democratic Party. But the fact that she changed nothing and she still supports the same policies, that tells you that Republicans or the Democrats rather, they met her. She didn't change to meet the Democrats. The Democrats changed to meet people like her. And it's not like Trump is the only catalyst of this phenomenon. You know, Democrats have been inching further and further to the right as, you know, Republicans have inched to the right as we go deeper into late stage capitalism. But that should never happen. It tells you we have no left wing choice. Neither of the two parties represent the most popular policy positions. I mean, think about this. A majority of Americans support Medicare for all. And this is not in the manifesto of either of the two parties. A majority of Americans want to legalize cannabis. This is not in the manifesto or party platforms of either of the two mainstream parties. So there's a huge portion of people in this country who are just not being represented. Their ideas, which I think are the right ideas, progressive ideas, more democratic socialist ideas about worker co-ops and whatnot, these are not being represented. Whatever happened to, you know, demand, there's a demand for it, so why isn't there anyone filling that demand? Sure, you have politicians here and there individually filling that demand, but if the Democratic Party was serious about winning, they would try to adopt more left-wing policies, and they wouldn't shift further and further to the right to appeal to disillusioned Republicans. But the fact, again, that they are easily able to appeal to people who are former Republicans when that Republican, like Jennifer Rubin, has not changed ideologically, that is such a huge issue. And it tells you that we've got a lot of work to do.